Hey folks, it's in full spring here on the homestead. Lots of work and a lot of activities going on. Stay tuned and I'll share with you guys what I need to get done and what I've done. And yeah, we're gonna incorporate off the beaten path, treasure hunting, uh, homestead arts and crafts. We're gonna incorporate the whole thing into this show. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Uh, like I said in the bumper, we're gonna incorporate a lot of my different series into this one segment. We've got different playlists that I've uh, coordinated with you guys to keep things separated. I've got building project series, uh, arts and crafts series. Actually, I'm moving all that to another channel called Jerry Hansen Studios check that out on uh, YouTube. I created a whole show, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about that right here. Also, we're gonna talk about backyard mechanics series, uh, building projects, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, off the beaten path, treasure hunting, so let's go. Since I'm right here, I gotta share with you guys Homestead building project series. We're gonna be stripping off the fluff off the front of the house. I'm gonna get ready to paint it. I'm tearing the porch apart. We're building a new porch. The porch will come six feet out and it'll be 12 feet wide. It'll come to the edge of each window, kind of settled in with a door kind of centered in the deck and it will be covered uh, because I, when it snows, we have snow that slides off the roof and piles up right in front of the house, buries the walkway, also buries the uh, doorstep. So I'm going to move the walkway out uh, another two feet away from the house so this I don't have so much snow shoveling during the winter months. Yeah, trying to reduce the amount of labor. And then as the snow slides off the roof, it falls and blocks my doorstep. So we're going to go ahead and get a building permit. Uh, I don't need a building permit to build the deck part of the porch. But if you're going to put a top over a porch, you need a building permit, at least in our area. So I've got to go apply for and pay for that building permit. And they're there for our safety because the inspector wants to make sure that that roof isn't going to collapse on us under the weight. So I'm going to make sure it's built to the right specifications and make sure everything's legal. I don't want my family to be injured or myself to be injured or my guests to be injured because of my stupidity. Yep, that's why I want an inspector to come out here because they're the professionals and they make sure I did it right. As you can tell, I have been weed eating and mowing yeah it took me three days to do the all the front yard with the mowing and the weed eating uh including the uh the big front yard out here we're going to get all the weeds all the limbs all the dead trees cut down cut up removed so this will be actual mowable i had to do this with the push mower because my riding lawnmower won't start. I think it's this uh, pressure switch down here in the back. Uh, when the seat goes down, the weight of the seat pushes that pressure switch in. It keeps the motor running or it allows the juice to flow to the motor. But if you should fall off or get up, the um, it's a safety feature. The, uh, the unit automatically shuts down, which is good. But I was having problems with this last year and I noted I'm going to have to replace this. So I'll just squeeze that out of there, go online, check my model numbers, and order a new one. I also have a um, 
bushings that I purchased for the front axle, hopefully that'll work because the wheels are really cockeyed and they won't, um, yeah, the wheels, they, when I turn, it, it's really bad, a bad thing. Let's, let's see if we can start this up. Uh, I got the battery fully charged. So there's a switch here in the butt. There's a switch down here in the um, clutch. Nope, still no juice. And the battery's fully charged because I had the battery charger on it. We're in neutral. That's disengaged, so it, there's no reason why it shouldn't start. So. <clears throat> Like I said, just troubleshooting it last year, um, knowing what that seat switch was doing. So I've had to mow everything with a push mower. And this is my little push mower I purchased. Pulled it out this, uh, this spring, set all winter, and put some fresh gas in there. I only use uh, that non-ethanol gas and small engines that's recommended by all of my mechanic friends, especially the mechanic friend across the street, Master Mechanic. He told me, don't use that corn fuel in any of your small engines. Bad, bad, bad on them. Uh, I don't care what other mechanics say. Uh, well, they're wrong. They're just flat out wrong. Anyway, this I got as a treasure. I walked into the garden department at Walmart about eight years ago, and this was in the garden department in, with, in, in a clearance lineup. It was the, it was going into winter, it was fall. It was going into winter, and I got it for, <laughs> get this, $23.50. No, $27.50 is what I paid for this lawnmower. And it still works. I pulled it out, cranked it right up after I primed it, and it worked great. So I guess it's worth it to wait until after the season to shop for your garden implements for the next year, especially your big ticket garden implements. Uh, this lawnmower retailed for a uh, hundred and some, two hundred dollars. Yeah, I got it for a fraction of the price. Excellent deal. Well, as you can see back here, I've got my stockpile of building materials. I've been building, uh, stockpiling building materials because this is all the material I'm going to be using on my back patio. I'm uh, taking off all the deck boards and I'm going to be using those on other projects, but I've got plywood down there. We're going to lay down a, a solid plywood decking and we're going to raise the deck up a little bit. And uh, while I have it all disassembled, we're gonna go ahead, scrape it down, paint it, and probably replace, replace the front po post, the four posts there. I'm not gonna make it bigger, but we're in the process of painting the house. Uh, same way with the front, where when I have everything down, we're just gonna go ahead and paint the surface of the house. Plus, we're just gonna do a lot of repairs. A new engine, put in my Ford Thunderbird. Uh, now I just have to replace the clock spring inside of the steering wheel. So the cruise control, the wind side mirrors and the, ba uh, the radio will work. In addition, I have to purchase, I have to go online and purchase a replacement for the powered antenna. When you turn the radio on, the antenna comes up. That quit working years ago. Uh, I also have to replace the battery cable. I have the clock spring, I have the battery cable, I just have to get them in and get them replaced. And also I have an engine light come on in the car. So I have to get the car down to a muffler shop because what happened is the sensor on the right passenger front catalytic converter is failed. So I'm gonna replace that. And then the car should be good to go. This is getting to be a classic. It's a 1996 Ford Thunderbird. My wife and I just love this car. We took it down and have it de had it detailed the inside. Beautiful. Our last project in the car is to go ahead and have this little dent fixed in the hood and then have the whole paint job redone and the pen striping redone. Then it should be okay. I'm gonna try to get to that project today, maybe. 
No, because there's another major project I have to get done. As you've seen in a previous video, I have a deer that's jumping in the fence. Now I have this fence stretched up high enough to where it can't get in, but it's, it's, it's jumping right here. Uh, I just got to get that all fixed up, get it set up. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tear down the fence, replace it with my new fence that matches the side fence, and then just go ahead. But I'm having problems with these fence posts, these four fence posts. Is you can see this shallow rock right here. There's just not much here. I can't dig, and it's not big enough. I can't find a drill to drill through rock big enough, a drill bit to accommodate those T posts that I want to put in there. So I'm going to have to do a workaround. I'm going to build some boxes, deep boxes, and I'm going to pack them in cement so they'll uh, seat it in. Then we'll just put a raised bed around it to try to conceal it. And that will be my fix for that fence. And then sometime today, I just have to go get my beekeeping outfit on and go check on the bees because I did add new bee colonies to there and see how well they're growing. And if they're growing out pretty good, I can go ahead and just add another super or a brood chamber to it. And then the middle of the blue hive, I have the honey super. So I want to inspect that and see if there's any honey to start harvesting from those. I also have to weed eat along the back side here, uh, the goat pen, uh, because when it gets uh, dried out, it becomes, well, I don't want it to become a fire hazard and it's right up against the building. So we're just gonna go ahead and weed eat it down. And I noticed that the goats have um, torn that top rail of my fence off. I just have to get my screwdriver, my power driver and some screws go in there and fix that. That's gonna be an easy fix. But the shed, they completely torn that shed apart, so I'm gonna have to get some material for the inside of the shed and completely renovate the inside and re-affix the siding to the back of it. My pickup in the Backyard Mechanic Series, I've gotta, once I get my car fixed, I'm gonna pull it out and pull the pickup up. I have forward, but I don't have reverse. I blew the reverse in it trying to back up my daughter's new fifth wheel, but that fifth wheel was way too big of a load for that truck. That is a Chevy one ton dually. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the tranny. I've got the transmission repair kit for it. We're gonna go ahead, or I'm gonna go ahead and replace the transmission uh, parts in it. And we'll get reverse back and then the truck will be good to go. And then I can maneuver my bigger trailers and also maneuver some fifth wheels. Now the Subaru Forester got uh, hit by a deer and completely smashed in the front. So we had this whole area replaced and even the headlight assembly. My son says the headlight is not working. I don't know if they didn't plug it in, but I gotta, I gotta fix that also. Now with all this chores on the farm, especially in the springtime, farm work becomes more and more prevalent because I'm trying to mitigate uh, wildfire damage here on the homestead. It's getting hot today, it's starting to dry out, things will start dying down, and then we have the risk of wildfire. So if I can keep maintenance on the farm and keep the fuels down around all the buildings, then we're, we're, we're doing good. I've already had about four different folks come up here who are firefighting professionals and say that my farm is pretty good for as far as a defensive a zone that we have around the home. 50 feet perimeter around the home and outbuildings cleared of all brush, limbed the trees up. Uh, also, 100 feet around the house, you thin out all your trees, about one every 30 feet or so, so they're not so thick. And then uh, it's also wise to knock the brush down, but limb them up 100 feet and thin the trees out. And that's all they're asking. That way the, 
uh, there's no fuel. And then keep it irrigated, keep your grass cleared and cut, trimmed, all the weeds down, and keep uh, barriers around your house, uh, non-flammables. Like, look what I have around the front. This is going all the way around the house. It's also gonna go along the back of the yard stuff and I'm going it all along the fence line. It's a weed barrier with pea gravel, and then that way I can plant some ever-bearing uh, plants that are beneficial to my bees, and also keep them spaced out. Gives me some form of landscape, and also gives me a fire barrier. Now on my treasure hunting series, I uh, escaped with the, uh, the Sububu. One day I went to Jacksonville by myself just to get away, get off the farm. And I actually had to go, uh, I left early because I was going to a meeting of filmmakers in Medford. So I decided I'm gonna journey out to Jacksonville. And so I spent the, a little bit of the afternoon out there. And at the end of Jacksonville, there's this little store. It's called Christian Discount Books. I walked in there. As you know, I've been looking for a series of books from two different authors that my wife has been uh, in, taking interest in. Jeanette Oak and, oh, what's her name? Uh, yeah, this gal. Anyway, my wife's got quite the collection, and as I go to the thrift store and other bookstores, I'll look for the list of books that she has on her list. I carry it in my wallet, and I cross them off as we go along. That way I'm not buying them again. <laughs> anyway, I found some books for her collection in the Christian Discount Books. Really good value, about two bucks a book. That's cheaper than the thrift store. Excellent. And I got to spend some time in Jacksonville. I love that town. That is pretty cool. Anyway, uh, so I had to go take care of some art uh, at the gallery. We are getting art ready. I've gotten some art in the gallery. <clears throat> and I got to tell you something about that. These are two of the pieces that I entered into the gallery. Uh, went down and picked them up yesterday. They're having a members exhibit, and I'm a member of the Rogue Art Gallery. They wanted three pieces to be uh, brought down so they could basically jury them. They had such an overwhelming response that they didn't have enough wall space to display everybody's art. So I took three pieces down, and they were very diplomatic at ch ch you know, but basically picking out the best of the three that all the artists brought in so they can have room to help display as many artists talents as they can so i've got one piece hanging down there i had originally taken two pieces earlier they rejected those uh, they didn't quite fit what they wanted and then I took five pieces to another gallery, Art Du Jour, over on Main Street. And uh, the one juror loved my pieces and really wanted them on the uh, walls. But the other two, I guess, jurors, they just, they didn't see eye to eye with them is what he told me. It's just like, that's okay. It's good. Um, I'll just keep painting and drawing and coming up with new ideas, new material. I may just drift over into Western art uh, altogether or just stick with stuff that's around me. Because I, I was talking to some of the gallery uh, people that they said a lot of people are looking for art that is uh, local, of local things. So I'm going to, I've always drawn things or painted stuff local, so that's what I'm going to do. So in a future episode, I'll take you guys down to the gallery and show you the piece that they kept. And, you know, we'll see what the other pieces look like. Ah, there's a lot of talent up in this region. Anyway, I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, or a frugal homestead tucked high in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I upload them. 
Remember, be safe. Always be kind. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye now.